It's time to talk cars, have a little fun, serious talk, and a ton of passion with Steve, Felicia, and the rest of the gang here on Drive Friendly. Good morning and welcome to another episode of Drive Friendly. I'm your host, Steve Rosansky from Friendly Auto Centers. And along with me is my wife today. It's Saturday, even October though it's really 10. Wednesday, but today is our 27th wedding anniversary today. Yes. Yes. Married to this lovely. <laughs> you know, I'd be out of prison right now. Oh, never mind. <laughs> it's anyway, a marathon, not a sprint. <laughs> that's for sure. That's 27 wonderful years with this girl, and uh, hopefully we'll have another 27 together. And so today we have our normal guest, Matt the Mustache Watson from State Farm. And with us, one of the scariest people I've ever met, P.K. Jordan from East Valley Mediator and the Lullaboy Foundation. And with her, a guest who looks very frightened to be here, Jeff Guarino. I don't even know what he's doing here, but he's part of. He, he works the, with PK. He works with PK. That is why he's the one you're getting because I'm getting her. Notice, <laughs> notice the, people, the people who've worked with PK all don't have hair. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> it's incredible. So um, today we're going to pick up a little bit. Uh, we were talking about used cars last week, and I, and I want to talk about that. But I also want to talk about an incident I had this week with a customer. Uh, about getting an engine replaced. So uh, sit tight, and we're going to do that. Remember, I'm the owner of Friendly Auto Centers located at Main and Higley in lovely Mesa. Our phone number is 480-830-9377. And you can visit us on the web at friendlyautocenters.com. And you heard 1580 The Fanatic. Awesome, awesome sports radio. By the way, the Jets lost we last right. week. As I pre- well, I predicted it was 5-3. to three. I, I think Darnold looked like he was scared to death and, and playing for his job, which he did. Um, he didn't do so bad, but, um, you know, you can only throw to the other team so many times in, 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 you know, and try to win. It just doesn't work. I don't but, know. Talk to, New England, talk to the New England Patriots but, about that one. But Ripien from the, from the Broncos looked really good. I think we should trade for him and send or anyone. Don, anyone. Anyone, anyone, please. Steve, I, I'm so, anyone, I'm anyone so impressed. Oh, I'm Go so ahead, impressed Matt. that you predicted the Jets' loss. Uh, pretty pretty impressive, Captain Obvious. I don't think they'll win. It's it. like predicting the sun is going to rise. In Listen, Arizona. if the Browns can beat the Cowboys, the Jets don't have a chance of winning a game this year. <laughs> I'm actually going for the first round draft pick. But anyway. And the Cowboys are playing the Giants this week. And being from back east, that's very exciting. It's a big game. It's a big, it's a huge, it's a conference huge game. So it's a huge rivalry. Yeah, we'll watch something else. Okay. So anyway, we were talking about used cars last week. And one of the things, uh, one of our customers came to us this uh, week. And with a pickup truck that needed a considerable amount of work, maybe four or five thousand dollars worth of work, and it's not that old of a truck. Um, it's about a two thousand and nine Dodge. It has about one hundred and thirty thousand miles on it. And they said, you know, we're going to go look for uh, another truck. And I guess they looked at what a replacement vehicle costs versus what it is to fix what you have, and they decided to go ahead and have it fixed because the used vehicle comes with a very minimal warranty and the repairs that. What we're going to do, of course, come with a lifetime parts and labor warranty. But one of the things that I talked to them and two other customers about this week is when you get into that situation where all of a sudden your car has just died and you need to go out and get one, we recommended last week maybe renting a car for a week or two because they're very inexpensive now. So you can drive around and see what you want. But what I didn't mention, which is really important, let's say you take a guy like Matt Watson, State Farm. He has three little kids. And they're all under what nine years old? Nine, okay. seven, and four. Okay, his needs today are minimal. I mean, you can you can drive with a small SUV or maybe like a Chevy Tahoe. But let's say he goes out and buys a new vehicle today, and the average loan, like Jerry said, is between sixty and eighty-four months. Now, will that same vehicle work for a guy who's ten, eight, and four for the next six years? That means they're going to be sixteen, twelve, and. 10. Do you know how bad that car is going to smell with those boys oh, at that age? I'm sorry, Matt. Just giving you a heads up. I know that. I know. We're on, we're, we're, but, we're on but car besides, number two. I get it. But besides that, Will, I mean, listen, you're going to be schlepping these kids around to soccer and to karate and all that stuff. And there's a lot of gear when you go on vacation. So you have to look at, is this vehicle that I'm going to be making payments for the next five years really going to suit me? for the future. And you really have to look at that. Um, let's say you're a senior citizen and you've been driving, I don't know, a Ford Taurus, but now you're older. My dad used to drive a Suburban. Yeah. Up until up until he was 80, he was yeah. driving a Suburban. And, he he can't, and there's no way he could get in and out of there now. So he went down to a smaller Kia or a Hyundai um, SUV. So again, it's really, really important to look for what your future needs are. And also at your finances. Yeah, today you may be able to afford that 
those payments like Jerry was talking about. But if you're in the retirement sector and your your income is going to be less, are you still going to be able to make those payments? Are you still going to be able to insure it properly? Are you still going to be able to keep up with the maintenance? You know, a lot of people think because, you know, I bought a new Hyundai, it has a 10-year uh, warranty. That means everything's warrantied. And, and that's simply not so. You still have to maintain it. You're still going to need brakes and tires and shocks and um, hoses and belts, things like that that go bad. Those 10-year warranties are not bumper to bumper. They are, you know, powertrain. And um, they're very, very strict about making sure you change your oil and you have all your receipts. Very, very important when it comes to those warranties. And which kind of leads me into something else that I wanted to talk about also is these discounted engine replacement places that we see advertised in various newspapers. We had a customer with an S10 pickup truck. He had an engine replaced at one of these places in Phoenix where they advertised that his engine would be $1,495 completely rebuilt. And he didn't read the fine print. So they took the engine out. They dismantled it completely and said, well, you're going to need this, that, and this in the engine. And uh, it ended up costing him $4,000. I think that six-point font is only for dealers and dealerships. Yeah. Because it's, it's so tiny. You it's it's ridiculous. It. And they wouldn't even pick him up. He had to take... The, the light rail and a bus to get to the place. And when he gets there, they said, oh, we only take cash. So then that's when they took him to the bank and got him cash and a cashier's check. So this was this past June, he had it done. He had the car dropped off to me last week and it, it has a dead cylinder. Cylinder number two is not firing, has zero compression. He can't find the receipt, but he said all the receipt said was received cash, $4,300. No warranty, no anything. And he's an older guy, so I called the repair shop up as his son. I just said, this is my dad's car. And his first, thing, his first thing was, does he have his receipt? I said, no, he moved. He can't find it. Can't do anything without a receipt. I said, well, you have a copy of the receipt. No, we don't save copies of the receipts, and we don't have any computers. Oh. Now, this is the year 2020. Slow IRS. Everybody <laughs> has a computer. Well, I said, well, if you read manufactured or rebuilt the engine, a rebuilt engine is a rebuilt engine. No, sometimes we do only a repair. Sometimes we do this. And we're going to need every single oil change receipt that he had to change it every 3,000 miles. I'm like, but it didn't say that on his original receipt. No, we told him that. So this guy was giving me, a mechanic of 44 years, every excuse that he's not going to warranty it. He said, maybe it overheated. Maybe he has a bad radiator. Maybe his transmission's bad. Maybe he didn't change the oil enough. This guy has no warranties out to $4,000. There's nothing we can do for him. So be aware of those kind of places where they advertise this ridiculously low price. Make sure you get a written estimate. Now, an estimate is not a guaranteed price because there always are certain, we always tell people a few hundred dollars either way. But if you're rebuilding an engine, if you've been building engines for years, you kind of know what it's going to cost. So let's say your estimate's about 3,500. It could come out to 36 or 37 if the customer needs a, a radiator hose or a spark plug or something like that. But um, this guy went in and he didn't see the fine print, which was fine font over very, very light background. So you could barely read it. And I saw the ad and it said in there, substantial cost, substantial extra cost, once we determine, once we take the engine apart, if other items are needed. So I don't know what they're talking about, a complete They're already telling engine. you it's substantial? Yeah, I'll show you the ad. It's, it's in like the I Phoenix mean, Times. Isn't that like bait that. and switch? Not if it's in writing. Of course it's bait and switch. It's Right. It's I mean, right. But what repair shop doesn't keep records? I said, what is it receiving? It's a piece of paper. I can go in there and show you. I said, in his original paper only said paid cash. It didn't say anything about. Uh, it was no mileage. In this day and age, how can you have a repair shop without a computer? Don't you order your parts online? Nope. It, it's old-fashioned. The guy's, These guys paying everything cash. He's ordering from whoever, and there's no track. Who doesn't have a computer in this day and age? And we had another one. Uh, he was driving from Florida, moving to Mesa, and he got stuck in Texas. The transmission on his truck went. So he went to a repair shop. They put a new transmission in. He drove to Mesa, and this transmission is no good. He, called, he came into my shop. We told him what the noise was. He said, I just had it done. So I helped him out. I called the repair shop, and the repair shop bought the transmission from O'Reilly Auto Parts. But what they did is they put the transmission in the customer's name, so it looked like he purchased the transmission and gave it to the repair shop. So the repair shop offers no warranty, nothing. There's nothing the customer can do. So he has the warranty, 
through O'Reilly, but the problem is O'Reilly only pays $45 an hour labor to change it when the rest of the world labor rate, the average in the United States is $135 an hour. And the customer has to make up the difference for the labor, for the fluid, for everything else. Wow. And he, he doesn't want to pay it. And, and I understand that. At our shop and most other really, really good repair shops, our warranty is covered coast to coast and you don't have to pay anything out of pocket. Or if you do, it gets easily reimbursed. There's no problem. But because he did it this way, because this repair shop did it this way, he has no recourse. He stopped payment on the credit card. So the repair shop in Texas called O'Reilly. O'Reilly is now not warranting the transmission because technically the customer hasn't paid for it. So now he has a transmission in a car that nobody wants to change. He can't get a warranty on it. And most likely the credit card company is not going to take his side because basically he bought a transmission. He doesn't want to pay according to the terms of his warranty that he was given to have it exchanged. And now he's driving around with a transmission with problems there for voiding his warranty. So if you're out of town and you get stuck, you have options. You can have a tow to, I, I don't like chains and franchises, but it's a better option than going to some individual mom and pop place that does not offer a warranty. Yeah. Um, you know, maybe you'll find an Amco or one of those kind of places. At least you have some kind of recourse. But um, if not, try to find a private repair shop that's part of maybe the Automotive Service Association or the Automatic Transmission Association. Well, can you call your, your your mechanic from home and have them help you? Exactly. Find well, that's where I was going next. Now he could have called his. He could have. <laughs> he could have called his regular mechanic in Florida and said, "Listen, I'm stuck. Find me a repair shop." Now, if he was my customer and he called me and he was stuck in the middle of Kansas. I, I'd be on the phone in 10 minutes and have repair shops. 10 minutes, that, are you having coffee first? The guy's stuck. Get on the phone right away. <laughs> I got to get the number. I got to look people up. This is what I deal with. So we'd be on the phone immediately. And then we'd find repair shops through our associated factory motor parts because we're part of the partners network. Uh, we're also part of the Pronto network. We're part of the AC Delco, the Motocraft. We're in like so many associations. And then we can help them choose a repair shop that has ASC certified technicians where if they get it repaired at that shop and there's a problem, it can be resolved at my shop here in Mesa or a shop in Virginia or New York or wherever. So, you know, choose wisely if you do get stuck in, you know, the middle of somewhere going somewhere else, you're on vacation. Don't just feel that you're trapped um, in that place. You know, maybe you're in a one horse town and maybe the next town is, you know, a two or $300 tow bill away, but you may save thousands of dollars to prevent this issue like we have with this transmission. And uh, if you're a AAA member or a state farm member, usually you have towing as part of your insurance or part of your AAA package, and you'll be towed to a AAA approved facility or wherever. But, um, you know, do that. You do have options. You are never as stuck as you think you are. And if you're one of my customers who's listening, just call me. We'll help you. There are lots of excellent, excellent repair shops uh, around the country, I'm part of many associations. There are more good guys than bad guys. Believe me when I tell you. So Lisa, take it away. Well, first of all, there's a couple of things I want to say. The secret to success of 27 years of marriage is compromise. For example, I think our background is horrible today. I like I it. I didn't like it. I don't want it. I think it's really <laughs> ugly. So don't blame me. Please write in and tell Steve how horrible it is. So I'm just going to put that one out there. I'm surprised you said stubbornness offline, but now yeah. here we are online and it's compromise. <laughs> well, you know, this uh, stubbornness and compromise. It's the yin and the yang of life. So just before we get to PK, because she's going to talk a lot about separating and family problems, especially in the time of COVID. I just want to give a shout out to our friends at Courage Under Cancer because they raised over five thousand dollars at their that at their um at their fundraiser last weekend. And our um, our manager, our marketing director, Eric Ariola, was auctioned off, and he was really excited about it. Did so I win? Batches that got auctioned off, so it was really fun. So we have to I'll have to see how that day goes. Was he like a giggle? <laughs> hey, you know what? It's for a good cause. So um, anybody who wants more information about Courage Under Cancer, they are fundraising so that it can help people who have cancer pay for things that they need. So please contact us at Friendly Auto if you have any questions or know somebody who could use Courage Under Cancer. We really, we really, it's a wonderful cause, and we wish uh, Dee all the best. So we also want to mention that we are having a health, a health and safety week at Friendly Auto next week. So on October 13th, there we are going to have a blood pressure drive in co in collaboration with Advisor Care, our friend Sandy Dyke at Advisor Care, 
is going to be running a blood pressure clinic. So come in, have your blood pressure taken. It's socially distanced. We're all fine, but it is free. And you know what? It is a silent killer. So you never know. It doesn't cost anything. Come by and say hi. And on the 15th, we are going to have Kraken Auto Glass is going to do free chip repair. So oh, anybody yeah, who's a got car. a car with a chip repair, come by on October 15th. We're going to have free chip repair. So watch out on Facebook. Look in our ads. Give us a call. Just come on in. It's free. We we just want to help our our neighbors. Hey, Felicia, so, let me jump wait, in. Can I oh, go ahead. If you if you uh, if you come in, you get high blood pressure. It's mm -hmm. not a diagnosis by the doctor. So immediately come to Matt Watson State Farm if you are <laughs> high blood pressure. Let's get life insurance set up, scheduled before anything is put in place from a doctor. Just saying. And then throw some rocks at your car and crack an order glass. We'll fix it for free because you were so. Oh, we upset. got it. This is all a setup. <laughs> She's going to have my blood pressure taken, grunt to you, buy insurance, and kill me the next day. You heard it here first. All this right. is what's going on. See, she can't even hold the straight face. So let's talk <laughs> about, so PK Jordan and Jeff Guarino, mediators of East Valley Medi Mediators. And you're working with a lot of families. That, I mean, there's a lot of talk now, the quarantine and social distancing, and a lot of things are closed. And people's mental health is, is becoming an issue. We're a very social. We're a very social society, especially here in Arizona. People move here to be outside, be around, have all the fun, do all the fun things. And we really can't do a lot of it. So there's a lot of tension at home. PK, what's going on? Well, it's two things. It's either the, pa the pandemic blues or a pandemic chaos. And I think we have a little bit of both. So the pandemic blues is like, I'm done. I'm over it already. Why are we still here? I've been spending too much time with you. You know, you just go to work already. You know, you got the kids here. Everybody's frustrated. So I call that the, the, the blues. And then the chaos is that I can't do it. I can't do it for another day. I'm done. I'm out of this marriage. I got to get out of here. So that's what a lot of the calls that we're fielding that are taking place right now. And we, um, both myself and Jeff, have some solutions with that because where there, people are saying, okay, I can't afford to do a divorce or a separation. And I think um, we want to see people put the brakes on that because there is so much to consider. And um, I've got a great team where, you know, if we don't have a solution, we, we kind of put it to make a phone call with one of us and come up with something. We try to get really creative with today's times because at the economics and everybody's family is is just really hit really hard. So, Jeff, why don't you, um, you know, share some of the, the, the stuff that we're dealing with just here in the in the last six months? Yeah, so there, there's a lot of things to consider when uh, we're contemplating divorce, separation, or just uh, other changes in uh, in your life. Um, so have you considered, like, your employment status? Is your job secure? Uh, what about your spouse's employment? I mean, you may think it's secure, but I've had two friends in the past month, 20 years with the same company, walked in one day, and uh, they gave them their walking papers, you know? I mean, businesses can't open right now in a lot of places, and so they're downsizing. It's real unfortunate. Um, so then you need to consider what about your financial resources? You know, can you can you afford it? Um, are are you secure with that? Uh, you know, if you don't have it, that's okay. I at least consider us and give us a call, and we can guide you through that. We're not like the referees in football or in basketball. You know, we are on your side and we're going to help you through this hard time and try to create some sort of agreement or understanding of, of what it's going to look like. I mean, even if you still need to live together for a while, let us, let us take you through that path. And I think the one thing that, um, so that people will know that what Jeff and I bring to the table is we've both been business owners for 30 years. And so we have that outside of the box thinking where um, if there's no such thing as a one size fits all with the family, um, we have some people that are doing um, espousal maintenance where they're doing say, hey, you know what, I'm not gonna be able to give you a P, you know, a payment monthly, but you know, you, you racked up some debt and um, I'm willing to help you to do the payments after a certain amount runs out. And then, you know, that's my contribution to that. I mean, that's not traditional. Typically someone gets something monthly, but you just recently were able to come up with that solution. And I thought that was really creative because I mean, in today's uh, unprecedented times, I mean, it, it's not, it's not what it was last, you know, last year. Wow. Yeah, you know, so they say, they say that COVID is moving everything up five years especially in terms of technology and, and, and how we're processing things through the world. Do you think it's moving up divorces five years? <laughs> yeah, it. it can be, but you know what? I think what it has done, it's already, 
you know, there's already a downfall. They are, they're only bringing out what's already been inside or what they've been contemplating, honestly. So they might have escalated it maybe a year or two, but I wouldn't say five years. Um, I don't see, I think we would have a whole lot bigger issue. Um, so I would say one of two years that it's accelerated that. Um, and, the, and the thing when you were talking about on the financial resources, um, when you're speaking of that, are, I mean, are you just talking about um, their jobs or not, or regarding their retirements? I mean, what are you seeing? Are you talking to me? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> no, <but> some <laughs> Hello. Because you're working yeah. out regarding the, you know, the retirements and getting money. Yes. So retirement, um, you know, your property, there's, there's a lot of areas where the, the bank accounts, uh, many, many different, uh, there's all the avenues we, we need to look at. I mean, you know, and, and when you're thinking about separating or getting a divorce, um, those are things we're going to consider because there's a lot of people that would say that, hey, look, I really worked real hard for my 401k and I want to retain that. Well, that's okay, but we still need to create balance in the divorce or separation. So we can, like PK was saying, we can get creative and look at other avenues. You know, maybe you're going to take it on the back end when you decide the other party decides to sell the house or, or some other asset somewhere else. Maybe you've got that, that classic. Like my dream car, I know it's not worth a lot of money, but it's the Pantera GTS, you know. I mean, so maybe maybe I'll give you my my Pantera, you know, for and that that'll offset that thirty k or something like that. Right. So I mean, one of the things that people are saying, I can't afford to, um, you know, get divorced right now because uh, it costs too much to rent, and then the expenses in two households. And so one of the things that we've putting our heads together is trying to, um, you know, fill that um, that need, and that is okay. We can create a, um, you know, by one mediation session, just having the conversation, setting really good boundaries and a visitation schedule. If you're contemplating separation and can't do the divorce, it can be done having a conversation with us. Because what we will do is that we'll look at the design of your house. You know, is it a split level? Is it, you know, you know, we got the master on one side, whatever, and being able to do a visitation schedule so that you have your own personal time, your time with the kids, still be able to interact, but still be able to um, save up money and prepare for that down, down the road once things start to stabilize. Um, we've already done some of those parenting plans, and that was actually be before the pandemic, where someone was living upstairs and the other one was living downstairs and working the visitation schedule. So let's say, for example, if um, it's my week and I live downstairs, I get to interact with the kids and the, the other parent stays upstairs and they don't, you know, they usually don't come out. They pre-plan their meal and uh, we don't really see that person. And then the next couple of days and we, we flip it around. And so then that person gets to interact with the kids. I know it sounds wonky, but this is what we need to do is to make something work and find a solution for that. Um, we've had actually parents that would say, um, okay, we can't afford to live apart. So what I'll do is I'll rent a studio. So when it's my visitation time, I will go ahead and stay at the house and you stay at the studio. And then when it's when it's a flip flop and it's the other person's and and that would be the stable house for the kids, but they would live in that studio, depersonalize it, but yet keep those costs down. And they might do that for about a year or two, just in that in that realm. I know it's it's not traditional, but I love how the families are coming up with some of the ideas. And also, you know what, we do have some time on our hands, and we're trying to come up with these solutions because at the end of the day, there's no such thing as a one size fits all. You know, uh, I give a lot of credit. Honestly, I give a lot of credit to parents that can be that civil with each other. I recently, a few months ago, it, it was I was very saddened by it because it was a, a wonderful couple that I'd worked with. I'd helped them buy two homes and they decided to split up. And I couldn't believe I spoke to them together on the phone. I couldn't believe how nice they were to each other. I was like, why are you guys? I mean, I want I didn't say it because it would have been rude, but like, why are you getting divorced? They were laughing. They were joking. I was like, like, it, it was I. I gave them so much credit. I can tell you right now, I would not be that civil. You know, I got PK already. It doesn't there. matter. Yeah, <laughs> and that's what we're finding. I mean, don't you agree, Jeff? Is there, they are amicable. And it's like, mm -hmm. why are you not staying married? I mean, there's there's a lot of reasons. We don't get into that. We'd like to keep it separate from the job that we're called to do. Um, but it baffles me because there's still that love and respect that they're showing one another. And I don't necessarily think that they're just putting on a show. Well, I, yeah. I, I, we I, I don't think it's the love. It's, it's definitely the respect. You know, they respect each other. They just found out they drifted apart enough and, and, and wanted to give that respect to each other to let them move on into another life or, you know, another situation. And, um, and yeah, it's, it's, 
those work out really well, fortunately, but we have the other ones where, yeah, it's, it's pulling hair out for sure. Well, let me poke the cat a little bit. What, is there any sort of discussion that you have beforehand? You know, one's got a studio, one's in the house, but then the guy gets a girlfriend. Is there mm-hmm. any, like, how does that play out? Because eventually somebody's going to meet somebody first. Absolutely. So that's a great question. And so we do put it in the agreement that if that is on the horizon, that they wouldn't have the courtesy to let one one another know. And either the one is going to permanently move back into the house and the other one is just going to get their own place or stay in their own place. But that way, it's kind of having that pre-discussion. And, and also in the parenting plans is that um, you don't get to introduce the child to your new um, your new significant other after you've been dating for six months or a year or whatever. I mean, those are things that are put in the agreement and it's not always followed, but it's just giving that respect in that space because there are children involved and introducing them to the kids too soon. It can have a lot of repercussions down the road. And I just want parents to really think about that. You know, speaking of kids and I'm not taking sides, I have no horse in this race. My kids are old or out of school. I don't, it doesn't mean anything. But what if you have two parents and one says, hey, they're going back to school. And the other one says, hey, they're learning online because I don't feel safe. Have you come across that situation yet? Or how would you handle that? Oh, they, where, are you saying where I'm they saying, now like now, you know, a lot, a lot of schools are like some are in, some are in class, some are online, some are, you know, hybrids. Right, they're disagreeing school. about disagreeing. whether they go to school yeah. or do online classes. Yeah. It's yeah. a good question. I'll let Jeff answer that because he's dealing with that right now. <laughs> and that is a great question. It, it, it's, it's new waters to us in a, in a lot of ways. And um, so uh, it, it comes down to what's, what's best for the children. Um, we really need to focus on what, what, what is working best for the kids. I understand that you may have some issues about them going to school, but you have them at home. You know, is the parent going to be at home to monitor them? You know, because they may have their Xbox right next to them and, and they're, they're dozing off or playing that instead of focusing on the schools. So, um, yeah, that, that's uh, we're really focusing on looking at the kids and what what is best for the kids. And that's what it's going to come down to. We've we got to put our political or our ide- ide- ideologies, is that correct, aside and, and, and focus on the kids. So we separate and go, look, you know. This is what's important to kids. I understand your political affiliation or your your thoughts on it, but really focus on the kids. And what about visiting? And, and especially one more question though, because this is, I'm sure this has come up. Okay, along those lines, um, we are in a quarantine situation, some of us, and we are locked down to some extent. And what if one parent says, "Hey, they're going to a party with me, and there's going to be 50 people there because this is I don't believe this." And the other parent says, "No." Absolutely not. I don't feel that my child will be safe. How do you deal with that? I mean, that's got to be happening. So that's really, okay. So it's, it boils down to everybody's belief system. Okay. So this is a safety concern and really it's, it's a helpless feeling when you don't want the child to engage and, and for the parent that wants to take them there is not being considered about the exposure that they're putting with the child. I mean, for me personally, if I was in that situation, I'd probably call authorities. But doesn't mean that they're going to parent and referee between the parent because what's happening at the courts right now is that um, I don't want my kid going over there because um, dad works over at the hospital and he's going to be probably exposed. That doesn't give grounds for you to withhold the child. It basically, I mean, there's still a duty to keep the children safe, but the courts, um, if you don't feel that that parent is safe and you want to see that your kid is healthy, take them to the pediatrician. Let them test them and find out if the kids are okay. But the judges are not going to basically tell you how to parent per se. Um, it, it just is. It, they're going to weigh the dangers. Regarding what you've been talking about today, the the mental um, wellness and everything, and everybody's stressed out about divorce separation. It's a real thing, and. Um, we're all very sensitive that we're all going through this together, but um, just want everybody to take a breath because this is an overwhelming decision that you're going to make. And we do offer free consultation in which we can explore all avenues with you. There is no cost to doing that. And um, the one thing I want to share is that the mental wellness is so important, not only for our parents, but also for children. And so I wanted to share some news if it's okay about the Lullaboy Foundation. Sure. Um, what we do at the Lullaboy Foundation is that we raise money for counseling stipends for pro- families that don't have the ability to pay for co-pays or 
counseling services. So we recently got an, another award, um, one last week and one this week, and um, have funds available to help these families in need. So we're pretty excited about that. Just want our families to take a break, put a pause on it. You know, let, let's just not try to rush to judgment and make these decisions. We want you guys to be well, your family to be well. Um, you know, the decisions can be made later, but there's a lot you need to know about the process. You know, we have, I don't know if you know this PK, but we have an interesting situation, not us, but Matt has had a very interesting situation about, you want to talk about people getting along with each other. I don't know how you guys do it. I give you all the credit in the world. Matt, tell us a little bit about, tell us a little bit about it. Yeah. You know what? I'll tell you, it's, it's a partnership. It's a business agreement. It's all of those things. But um, yeah, my oldest son is my stepson. And so my wife and his stepmom have actually gone into business together and started a mobile coffee business called The Exchange. And you can find them at, at The Exchange AZ. But they've been able to navigate through this process together. We have as a family, his dad, his stepmom, myself and my wife. And found ways. It's never easy. As you guys know, at East Valley Mediators, it's not easy. But if you're willing to always consider the child in the best interest of the child, then you're going to find a way. We don't parent the same. But what we do is have the best interest of our oldest son. So Felicia, I appreciate you bringing that up because I think it's really fun uh, to be in the position that we're in to be able to call each other friends and really a whole family unit unit at this point in time. And there was a time when my middle son was younger and he'd call Jackson's, my oldest son's dad, Daddy Phil, because he just, it was kind of, didn't really know any better, but we were so close. It became, we become a whole blended family. And so it's really cool that they've been able to start this business together and we've been able to parent together. That is cool. That so is anything is possible. possible. So that's, that's incredible. Yeah. Okay. That's great. Next yeah. week, PK, we're going to pick this back up again next week. And we're going to talk about the financial aspect of it in terms of where do you live? How do you find a place to live? How do you qualify for a loan, especially if one parent has such a higher you know, income than the other parent? There's a, lot, there's a lot to go through. So we are not finished with this. And we welcome all calls and all questions. If someone has one, please enter it. Before we get on to the next segment, though, Matt, uh, let's talk about what is the trivia question. Was a trivia winner? Now, the question was... What was the question? It was 1911. How much was a touchdown worth? How, much, how many points was a touchdown worth in 1911? And the winner was, oh my gosh, I have your name right here. Jennifer Crompton from Tempe had it right. The answer was five. Five, five points. Five points. And Imagine how keeping, different football would be now. And the, for those keeping score, it is now six with a, a one or two point opportunity after that touchdown but five points in 1911 and we see a lot more sec two-point conversions every year not by every the year it just well you don't see anything by the judge, except safeties but every year it just gets a little more there's a little more wrinkle to the two-point conversion a lot more teams are getting better at it so what's the question this week all right well and uh as the nba finals are as boring as ever who won the most career nba championships as a player again who won the most career NBA championships as a player? Oh okay, and the winner will get a hat, a, either a hat. Not that hat. Not that That's hat. I've used that hat, but a hat just like this for a T-shirt from our radio station, 1580 AM. And the answer, the answer is not Enrico Palacio. <laughs> so I want to just move on a little bit and talk about new buyers. Um, not necessarily new buyers, but just buyers of homes. We are in a in very crazy market. The interest rate, as you know, is very low. Ryan is not here today because he is, like I said last week, he is overwhelmed with refinancing. He has currently 54 clients on his books right now. He wow. is, if he had hair, it would have been gone. He is really, I don't know how he does it, but he will join us next week and talk about that. But I want to talk a little bit about how to, how to navigate and this really intense buyer's market that we're in. It doesn't show any signs of slowing down um, and, and, we have to, I just want to help people because I see people making, as a listing agent and as a buyer's agent, I see people making some really bad mistakes that if they had talked to somebody up front and know what they were doing, the whole point of this, just like whether you're going to fix your car or you're going to get divorced or you're going to get insurance, you need a plan. You just don't walk in and say, boom, I'm going to get divorced or boom, I'm going to you know, get, buy a car. You have to think about it. I mean, people do it and they live to regret it. So the best thing to do is to have a plan, to sit back, 
and have a plan before your realtor ever opens up the first door for you to look at. There's a few things you need to know and think about because in such a crazy market, everybody gets crazy. You see, I've been at, I've been at showings to show houses for, for buyers and there's been a line out the door of agents. Now there's only one house. There's 15 people online. It's crazy. It, like I said, the house I sold in Chandler a few months ago, what I get 28 offers in 48 hours, 28 showings in 48 hours and nine offers. So, you know, you got to, you got to be able to think fast when you find the house you want. And the, the, the frenzy, the feeling of like, like everyone's like this, it makes you even crazier and it makes you maybe make, not make such good decisions unless you have a plan. So the first thing I want to talk about is money. There are no freebies in this world. There is no program. I mean, there might be one somewhere, but right now, new buyers, nobody's giving you money. I mean, it's very rare. Programs come, but they get, but they run out of money. So right now, a new buyer, Unless you're a vet and you use a VA loan, which is like the golden ticket to lo- to, to mortgage loans, you're probably going to have to come in with money down. And the minimum right now is 3.5%. So let's say that you're looking for a house for $350,000. That means before you even look at a listing, you need to know you need to have 3.5% of that money down minimum. That comes to $12,250. Oh, good math. Okay. Well, you know, I did my math before. I was prepared. <laughs> I did. The, I don't do this in my head. So I'm a realtor. I can only multiply by three or 2.5. So the other thing you need is closing costs. Now, people confuse down payment with closing costs. A down payment is what you put towards the price of your house. You have got to put skin in the game at the beginning. You're going to take a loan out for the majority of it, but you have to have a little bit, even, even a tiny bit, three and a half percent. You have to have some skin in the game. So that is not closing costs. What closing costs are is that the title fees, the origination fees, the well, the lending fees, the county fees. This is what it costs to go through the process of buying a home. The paperwork process of buying a home, with, like I said, with the title and the lender and the county, is usually between three and four percent on a on a loan. It's usually about one and a half to two percent if you're paying cash. But if you're paying a loan, which most people do, it's about three percent. So on a house of three hundred fifty thousand dollars. You need to have $10,500 to close the deal. And you can't borrow that money because that money being borrowed, that's going to go against your loan. When you go to take out a loan, your lender, and hopefully you use a lender, Ryan, or somebody just as great as him, who's going to say, you just can't, you have to show where this money comes from. If it's going to be a gift, that's fine, but you need a gift letter. You can't just take cash out of your mattress and throw it in the bank. They want to know where the money is coming from. You have to be able to trail the money. So to start, just to start, without any other expenses, to buy a house and close the loan, you need, for a $350,000 house, you need $22,750 cash in your bank. Now, a lot of times, people borrow, you can borrow against your 401k if you get permission. That's allowable. You can take money out of your savings. That's fine. You can take money out of your mutual fund. You can get a gift if you get a gift letter. But know this. Nobody else is going to give you the money. There's no program out there that's going to hand money to a first-time buyer. It just doesn't exist anymore. And if you think in this market you're going to get a seller to pay your closing costs, good luck. Because I've been in negotiations where the seller wants the buyer to pay their closing costs. <laughs> so <laughs> those days those days of asking for favors as a buyer, the favor is you win the contract. That's the only favor you're going to get. Now, that's just to close the deal on the house. But what about... Inspecting the house, that's another $500. You, you can charge it. I mean, you're allowed to charge it. And, and your lender knows that these expenses are coming up. But do you know these expenses are coming up? A good inspector costs about $500. Then in the state of Arizona, you have to have a termite inspection. That's $50 to $75. Now, if the house does have termites, it does have to be addressed before the loan closes. No bank, no lender is going to close on a house with termites. Usually, the seller agrees to pay in most situations. Then there's the appraisal that you're going to get charged by your bank or your lender, and that's about $500. And that is all before closing. Now, what if, and we're going to talk about an inspector in a minute, but what if your inspector says, hey, you know what? I'm a general inspector, but I see things on the roof I don't like, and I think you should get a roof inspector. So a roof inspector, that's another $150 to $200. 
or a pool inspector because maybe there's a crack in the pool or I don't really know if this equipment is working right. So you want to get a certified pool inspector. Not all inspectors are certified pool inspectors. So you have to deal with that expense. Or what about the air conditioner? The most important appliance in your house in Arizona is your air conditioner. You can go without food, but you can't go without air conditioning here. And you want to make sure that that air conditioner is going to hold up at least through your first summer. So if there's if it's a little wonky or inspector's not sure about it, that's another cost. So right off the top, just an inspector, an appraisal, and a termite inspection, if everything else is fine, is another $1,500. So for this $350,000 house that you want to buy, you have to come in with $23,800. Now, like I said, the $500 for the inspector, the money for the appraisal and the termite, that can all be charged to your account. You can put it on a Visa, American Express, Amex, whatever. But you have to know that money's got to be, it's yours. You got to pay it. Nobody else is going to pay it for you. So just understand that those are your expenses because a lot of people get a real sticker shock. And all of a sudden they're all excited because they qualified for a loan without really understanding what their, response, their financial responsibility is. So that's number one. Ouch. No, oh, that's just yeah. one. That that's like- just that's just the first one. There's seven more. I don't even want to buy a house again. That's <laughs> I'll just I'm just gonna go, I'm just gonna go to the second one because it kind of falls in line with the first one, and then I'll give you the other six in upcoming shows. For the love of God and all that is holy to anybody, use an inspector. Do not use a contractor. I love contractors. I have a contract, I have several contractors, I have friends who are contractors. They're amazing, talented, super great. They don't know everything about roofs. They don't know everything about air conditioning. They don't know everything about pipes. They know what they know, which is contracting, which is knocking down walls, building walls, maybe putting a few things in, but they really don't know what to look for. A certified inspector has over 300 items that they need to go through in a house. In a house that's 1,700 square feet, it takes them close to two and a half hours to look through everything. They go, I mean, and they are bonded and they are insured. So if they make a mistake in your inspection and they miss something and you got to go back to them, they have insurance to cover this. A contractor does not. Now that's not to say not to use your contractor because along with this, you have 10 days for an inspection. Do not wait till day number eight to have your inspector look at it because now you've got two days to make crazy decisions. And what if something's wrong with the roof? How are you going to, you're going to get a roofer in one day? I can't even get a roofer in one day. It's impossible. You're going to get a a pool guy? No. And those 10 days, that's solid. If you don't get back to your seller in 10 days to tell them what you want fixed, it's as is. That's the deal. I mean, that's that's the way it goes. Most houses should be sold as is anyway, but that's a whole other conversation. So take those 10 days in your inspection and this is, this is number two. Use your 10 days. Use all of them. Get that inspector. You should have an inspector online. Your realtor should have a, 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 a group of inspectors that they can choose from, that they trust, that if your deal is accepted on Tuesday, that house should get inspected Wednesday or Thursday at the latest. Because if there is a problem, you need time to deal with it. Now, what now? If you do have a contractor, if you do go into a house and say, hey, I want to break down this wall and I want to build this and I want to build a bathroom, that's fine. You can bring a contract. You have 10 days. You have 10 days to bring. I've had people who bring pool companies to see how much a pool costs to put in. I've had people that bring their contractors to say how if they think they could they can move the house around, if the house is they're able to do what they want. I've had people who work on flooring, make estimates, tile guys. You can you all those things, of course, with the permission of the homeowner if they're still living there, to keep going into their home. So try to, you know, be mindful of that. But use those 10 days to really examine that house. I mean, really look. Don't fall in love with something until you know what's underneath. That's all I'm going to say. So we have six more to go through. Next week, we'll, we'll probably do two or three more. So we only have a couple of minutes All right, so left. a couple of things I want to go over. The weather is going to be dropping. I mean, today is Wednesday. It's 102, but over the next few days, the temperature is going to drop significantly. Awesome. I'm very excited for fall. Now, most of you are listening and probably driving around with a tire light on. Don't panic. As the temperature drops, air pressure in the tire drops. Don't get nervous. Even if we filled it last week, the temperature, as they go down into the 60s at night, your air pressure may drop as much as five, six pounds. So don't panic. Stop by Friendly Auto Centers. We'll pump up your tires with air. And hey, we'll even give you a free Friendly Auto tire gauge if you want one so you can do it yourself at any uh, kind of filling station. A couple of things also now is summer is over. 
And as the cool weather drops, you're going to start seeing a lot more battery issues as the oil gets thicker and as it gets colder. So come on into Friendly Auto Centers. We have some really great five-year free replacement batteries, five years, at, at a wonderful price, no charge for installation, unless it's one of those really crazy ones where we have to take the seats out. But the 99% of the cars, we don't charge installation, and it's a five-year free replacement, no fancy paperwork, they're AC Delco and FEP no batteries. No two-point font? No two-point, no fine print. We don't have fine print at Friendly Auto. Uh, and just stop down anytime for a free battery test installed while you wait. So we are out of time. I want to thank our friends Jeff Guarino and, of course, um, PK Jordan and Matt the Mustache State Farm. If you need great insurance at a great price, give Matt Watson. What's that number again? 480 save? No, it's 480 830 save. That's 480 830 7283. And you're on the corner of Pow Brown and Power. Brown and Power behind the Sonic. You bet. Have okay. you ever been to the Sonic? Oh man, I've been there a ton of times. Oh, I still don't know what they serve there, but I know it's on roller skates or something. <laughs> anyway, so next week, I don't know who's coming on the show. We'll have a surprise for you then. <laughs> but I'm going to go and enjoy my anniversary today. I want to thank everybody for listening and thank 1580 The Fanatic. What a wonderful station. Now with all the sports going on, it's tuned in all the time here. So uh, stick around for some great uh, sports radio and we will catch you next week. And don't forget Arizona dry friendly. See you next week. Thank you for listening to Drive Friendly with Steve and Felicia. Visit drivefriendlyaz.com for live shows, past shows, and more about our host and guests. 